Gold Invest. Explore opportunity. The market for so-called rare earth is in upheaval. China, the dominant player, has restricted export of seven out of 17 elements crucial to numerous high-tech and defense applications. And just today, as I talked to you, uh, Pat, just a couple of minutes ago, a CNBC published an article saying that Tesla is having trouble with its production of Optimus humanoid robots because of the China's re export restrictions on rare earth magnets. Now, Ucor, CEO Pat Ryan is with us today. Ucor Rare Metals is a company that Gold Invest audience and followers will already know about, and the company's in the midst of that situation. So we want to hear more from Pat on what's developing at uh, Ucor. Welcome, Pat. Yeah, Bjorn, uh, good to be here again. Interesting times for sure. Yes, you can say that again. Uh, I mean, as I said in the introduction, the situation in the market for Rare has become well, let's say dire for, for Western end users, especially. And with, as with uh, witness with the, the article I referenced, uh, definitely has reached the mainstream over here too. Can you give us a bit more insight on what is happening ex exactly or actually happening? Where do you see the greatest issues, but also possibilities? Yeah, obviously it's all wrapped up in uh, the tariff wars. China, as you know, uh, when it comes to critical minerals, they really have a, a lot of tools in their toolbox. 30 of the 50 critical minerals that are defined as critical minerals, they actually contr control the refining and the processing of those critical minerals. So whether it's energy storage like um, nickel or cobalt or lithium, that there's certainly the, the processor uh, that, that controls the global market. And rare earth, they control 90%, 85, 90% of the refining and uh, mid-market uh, processing for rare earth. And those rare earths are used, of course, in permanent magnets. And as you mentioned, uh, yeah, Tesla's running into an issue with uh, robotics because you're Robotics were all driven by um, permanent magnets and that rare earth dependent. And uh, in fact, your robotics are probably the largest user of rare earth by the time we get to 2030. So Ucor has been working with its technology, uh, you know, since we bought the company Innovation Metals Corp back in May of 2020, we've invested over $10 million Canadian to get our technology ready for prime time. And I think you couldn't pick a um, right place, right time more effectively than what we've done at this point. Not, not by design, it's just the tariff war has really amplified it. We realize we have an issue with critical minerals, rare earth in particular. We're going to assign the um, two divisions of the DOD, Department of Defense, to accelerate and get the job back in good form. First was DPA. They said, DPA, we want you to find a way to streamline bringing mining operations on board because there's really only one new rare earth mine in North America in the past 50 years. That's the Mountain Pass mine. And that's a light rare earth opportunity. And they said to IBAS, the Industrial Base and Sustainability Division of DOD, you identify critical mineral projects that for refining, we need to find refining and process. Or of course, are dealing with IBAS. We have a $4 million program US right now. And what we're doing is running many, many hours in our Kingston, Ontario commercial demonstration plant. We've at this point run close to 5,000 hours on that plant. Okay. gathering up all kinds of interesting data with our rapid SX technology, really getting ready for commercial deployment. We've run over four tons of material. We're running heavy rare earth. And if you look at those seven critical minerals that you mentioned that are rare earth minerals that are being banned by China, they were very stealth and precise about what they did. Uh, they said, we'll take terbium dysprosium, heavy rare earth, not available in the Western world, and we'll ban those. We'll take uh, gadolinium and, and samarium, samarium used in uh, uh, samarium cobalt, magnets for fighter jets and other defense applications for the U.S. DoD, and we'll ban those. Uh, gadolinium used in nuclear reactors, we'll ban that, and a couple of others. So they're very precise about what they wanted to do. UCOR, of course, is right in the middle of all that. We have a, a unique technology that allows us to take multiple feedstocks and to reconfigure the plant any way we want to be able to produce samarium one week and two weeks later produce dysprosium and several weeks later produce terbium and several weeks later produce gadolinium. So it's a very scalable, modular way, not only to execute and deploy commercially, but to actually go and, with a chemical knife, get those critical minerals that you need. We're in a very unique position right now. I, um, I certainly would say so, yes. I think the technology is called Rapid SX. For those who haven't uh, seen our earlier interviews or haven't heard about UCO before, just a really short recap what makes that technology unique or what are the, the advantages because 
at heart, it's still solvent extraction, right? Yeah, that's correct. Solvent extraction is the only uh, process used in the world to separate out the individual rare earth oxides that are used for permanent magnets and other applications. And what UCOR has done is they've taken that same chemistry of solvent extraction and said, let's apply it that much more effectively. So the Rapid SX technology is a column, a computerized column-based technology. We're using uh, 21st century digital manufacturing. You're picking up different sensor points and using PLCs. And with that, you're able to occupy one third of the floor space that a mixer settler solvent extraction plant would uh, utilize. Your capex is considerably less. Your opex is seven to 10 times better on the throughput because of the way you get to equilibrium. It's also because it's a pressurized system. When you walk into a solvent extraction plant in China, it's quite caustic. There's all kinds of fumes in the air and you can smell it. When you walk into our commercial demonstration plant in Kingston, which is pretty substantial in size, you don't smell anything because it's a pressurized closed system with pumps and valves and PLCs and better throughput, the better capex and the scalable modular nature that I mentioned. That That is key because you can start and you can build one production line with a rapid SX machine, as we call it, then two, then three, then four. And you can deploy your capital in a very smart way and you can build your way into the market with real customers in a very smart way. Okay, so, so if I understand correctly, that is what you're trying in the US, in Louisiana, uh, at, or what you're aiming to do with the data you gather from the Kingston plant, transport that or to the SMC, I think it's called, and use that there. In the past, I think you mentioned that SMC already benefits from substantial tax benefits and other well, uh, support from the, the US side. Are you already getting any direct feedback on from the latest decision to prioritize these kinds of te technologies even more? Is this a new kind? Uh, are you expecting to get more support there? Well, uh, actually, and, and it's interesting you mentioned Louisiana. Yeah, we've had all the tax benefits, but the um, with the tariff wars going on, I think we've we've certainly announced in press releases that we've got a um, uh, the first SM state strategic metals complex in Louisiana is in a foreign trade zone, and that foreign trade zone means that we can bring material concentrates in from South America, from Australia, from Eastern Africa, from the Far East, not China, of course, and we can process it in Louisiana, and we can turn it around, send it back to end users in Europe, in Japan, in South Korea, and there's no tariff, no tax consequence. That's a big um, help at this point when tariff wars are up and coming because the the chessboard of critical minerals and how they move forward is very crucial. But but more importantly, as a, an, uh, an update, you know, when these tariff wars have gone back and forth, and currently I think we're at a 145% or I heard 245% on a, a tariff with China. And China didn't just take the export restriction, but they banned those seven critical reefs completely. And in mid-April, April 14th, and we were said, told, what can you do to accelerate your plan in Louisiana? And what can you do to actually leverage your asset in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, to actually start producing some of these materials that are needed? What can you do in 30 days? Can you imagine, Bjorn? I mean, it's a two-decade problem, and we're being asked, what can we do in 30 days? Sort of like an app on your phone, you know? Hey, yeah, I'll pull up the new app, and we'll have Samarium for you next week. Don't yeah. worry. Well, it would be nice, but not really. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work that way, you know? And the processing and refining does not happen at the mine site. That it very, very, very rarely happens that way. So we've got this processing facility, commercial demo in Kingston, and we've got the plans to build out in uh, Louisiana. We're actually waiting to hear what they have to say about that. Now, the reason they reached out to us is because if you're building a solvent extraction plant, it takes a long time. Rapid SX, we can build one line and then two and then three, and we can do it fairly quickly. So we put together a plan of timing, cost implication, and trying to get the job done for the North American, European continent, Western world, we need these critical rays. Let's make it available any way we can. And we'll wait and see how that plan unfolds. Okay. You're just following the plan that you have laid anyhow. How far you'd say you, you're away from actually producing any kind of rare elements on a commercial level base? Well, on a demonstration level, we're doing that in Kingston now. So we're producing heavy rare earth in Kingston right now. And you'll see some news coming out soon that says some of those samples are being sent to key strategic customers for evaluation. The plan in Louisiana currently shows that we will be up and running with our first, second and third line by mid-2026. Okay. So we're mid-2026, but if we have to accelerate that, we can. We'll wait and see what the urgency level is with the DOD and hopefully the Canadian governments and U.S. governments can work together on solving this uh, very urgent problem. And even the Europeans uh, try and get that in the mix as well, because we all need these critical inputs in order to 
drive our 21st century tech and, and our defense systems. So thank you very much. I think that gives us a good idea of where you're at and what you're working on. And I also think uh, people should uh, go to the company's website to get more information. I saw there's all kinds of uh, stuff also on, on the background of the technology and, and the market. So go to the UCOR website uh, to get more information on this exciting story, because as you mentioned, I think this is being at the right place at the right time in extreme, really. So uh, we're very excited to see how it goes forward. Longer term, though, what are your plans for, for the company? I mean, you've got uh, the first SMC plan there in, in the US. Would you then think about going to other countries, building the same blueprint? Yeah, absolutely. We've been having conversations with in the European community looking at a possible strategic metals complex in Europe. We've been certainly having that conversation with Canada as well. And then we've got joint ventured opportunities. You know, there are uh, up and coming resources. And again, I mentioned that the mining and the refining very, very rarely happen at the same spot. We're having conversations with companies in Brazil, uh, Australia in particular, about joint ventured opportunities where they would provide the feedstock, we would provide the separation technology, and together we'd be able to, you know, expand our tech that way. But beyond rare earth, you know, rare earth was the first assignment that we took on because that's it's critical and you know, right place, right time. Yeah, and you, you can see how critical it is right now in this trade war that's that's mounted up, and uh, and we need this for emerging industry in the West. But uh, we've had recent requests for um, uh, getting cobalt from nickel, and whatever solvent extraction is used anywhere, you can make it that much more effective and that much more precise by using rapid SX. So once we get our launch in Louisiana and start to move to, uh, to SMC number two, not far behind that, we'll be looking at other critical mineral processing, such as cobalt, which is you know currently from the DRC. And we feel we can find a way to solve some of that problem outside of uh, the DRC for the Western world as well. Okay. So no rest for the wicked then. You have your work cut, uh, cut out for the next couple of years, let's say, at least. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time and bringing us up to speed. Thank you.